Okay, so now we're going to talk about the other problem or the other code I was getting with this 2015 Dodge Durango with the ZF8 HP70. And then we're going to see how these eight speeds come out of park. All right, so the code I was getting after the repairs was a P1B14. All right, and the definition of that code is park by wire, unintended park position. So this code could set for a couple of reasons. Okay, one of the reasons the code could set is when the driver actually requests park and all the conditions are met and the vehicle speed is below the calibrated threshold, basically the vehicle probably would have to be stopped the parking pool will not engage. And that could be due to uh, like a faulty MV2 solenoid, faulty MV3 solenoid, something with the harness, the sub-harness for the MV3 solenoid, internal TCM problem. You know, maybe there's an issue with a speed sensor or something where the computer thinks the vehicle is still moving and it won't let the parking pool engage. Okay, another reason is the reason that I had is when you request it to come out of park, the parking pool is still engaged in park and it won't come out. So when you select reverse, neutral, or drive, you're basically still in park. All right. When I was uh, uh, when I went to do that, when I started the car, selected reverse, I put it in reverse, and immediately the R started blinking. Boom! Check engine light popped on, and that was the code that showed up. And that could be due to the same reasons with the solenoids TCM and also due to low pressure or low fluid level. All right, they're usually one and the same. So, you know, they say if you have this code, the first thing they want you to do is check the, the fluid level. So now we're gonna take a look at how these eight speeds come out of park. And pretty much you have the MV2 solenoid which is the park release solenoid, and that solenoid is about like 10 to 12 ohms. You have the park hold solenoid, that is the MV3 solenoid, that's the one with the green cap on it. And that solenoid is uh, 24 to 26 ohms. In the valve body, you have a park or release valve. All right, on the outside here, you have the uh, park release mechanical valve. And on the case, you have the park rod with this uh, very heavy barrel spring that actually holds it into park. Give me one second, let me just turn my light off. All right, so I'm gonna give you a close-up shot of this. I actually took the bracket off of the MV3 solenoids. We'll take this stuff apart and kind of show you. So pretty much what happens for these eight speeds to come out of park, uh, when the request is made for the transmission to release from park, the MV2, which is the park release solenoid, and the MV3, which is the park hold solenoid, both get energized. All right, so the MV2 solenoid supplies line pressure to the park release mechanical valve by the park pull release valve in the valve box. All right, so the, the, now remember, this car is holding in park by this, this very heavy spring. So the line pressure uh, overcomes the spring force and pushes the park release valve into the, um, the MV3 solenoid. It's got like a, a, a spring-loaded push valve. And then simultaneously, the magnetic field of the MV3 solenoid grabs the park release valve and holds it out of park. You know, there's fingers that come down to hold it. I'm gonna take it out to show you. And it holds it out of park. And then when the driver puts the car back into park, the line pressure goes away, the magnetic field collapses, and the spring force of this barrel spring puts the car back into park. All right, so that's pretty much how these eight speeds come out of park. <clears throat> um, so of course, you know, it's all done 
hydraulically and electronically. You know, as they say, it's parked by wire. So, you know, fluid level is very important. So, you know, just um, um, something real quick. You know, if, if you wanted to service these eight speeds, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody, of course, they all say it's lifetime, but you know, it's good to get new fluid in there. It's good to get a new filter in there. If you wanted to service these eight speeds, uh, it's a good idea to measure what comes out. So you know, you, and then you, of course, you put the same amount back in. Because again, in the last video, I was talking about, you know, filling it and the thermal element and stuff like that. So it's a good idea to measure what comes out and instead of just draining it into, you know, a, a bucket full of other oil and stuff like that. So that's my recommendation. Um, if you want to uh, service these uh, tra transmissions. So now I'm gonna get a little closer and we'll just take a look at, I got one valve body here with, you know, it's all together. This was the test valve body. I have another valve body here uh, that I have to do for, uh, uh, actually a ZF8 HP90 out of, a, I think it's a Hellcat. And I have a case here that shows the, the park rod with the, you know, the barrel spring. Um, all right, so let me get a little closer. And I have the bracket and stuff off of this so we can, so we can take a look at that. All right, so let me get a little closer and I'll be right back. All right, so here is the park rod assembly with the big barrel spring on it. Right now I'm going to get you on to the valve body. Okay, so here is the MV2 solenoid. All right, this is the sub-harness that connects into the uh, TCM. This is the park release mechanical valve, the MV3 solenoid, the park hold solenoid. And let me just show you here, I opened my book. And in the lower section of the valve body, this valve I have circled is the park pull release valve. I don't know if you can, that's coming in clear right, right here. All right, that is the parking pull release valve. Okay, so again, request come out of park, pull solenoids become energized. All right, so this is, you know, basically out here now, um, hooked up to the park rod assembly, and then line pressure is supplied to the park release mechanical valve via the park pull, parking pull release valve, and it overcomes the spring force. It pushes against that that um, loaded push valve, that spring loaded push valve, and then the fingers come down. Uh, the magnetic field of the MV3 solenoid simultaneously as it pushes back, the fingers come down and it holds this thing out of part. All right, so what I want to do is take this out. That is what the solenoid looks like. Okay, and here is the spring-loaded push valve in the middle. And we're going to take this out. That's the park release mechanical valve. So as it gets pushed back and it hits that spring-loaded push valve, you'll see the things fingers come down. All right, and then it holds this out of the park. So that's about it for this. Uh, the uh, Durango is uh, done. It works real nice. And I did reset the ship to DAP, so I'm going to be driving it around for the next day or so uh, to make sure everything is good. And that's about it. So, you know, again, uh, just uh, basically between the two videos, just know what you're getting if you elect to buy these parts online. 
All right, just look at the pan and look for that company Filtran that makes them uh, made in Germany. So just know what you're getting uh, to avoid any kind of future problems like we had with this one. This Durango uh, had the aftermarket pan on it, which of course the client thought he was getting an OE pan because that's how I believe it was advertised. Pan lasted 150 miles before it cracked and it was doing crazy stuff when the car was cold. Uh, constant fail safe, gear ratio errors in second, gear ratio error in fifth. And basically when the car was cold, um, you really couldn't even drive it. And then when it got hot, you never know if there's a problem. And then afterwards, uh, I had the I had the park by wire unintended park position code, the P1B14, and everything was related. So everything now is fine, and basically what I got to do is just double check fluid level. I want to drive, like I said, drive it around because I did reset the adapts, double check fluid level, and then the car is finished. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we will see you next one.